What is going on, Minecraft Java Edition players that like to play Minecraft Java Edition with Xaelith Launcher or any other launcher? This is just going to be for Xaelith Launcher though, because we are here for Xaelith Launcher. Today, I'm going to share some tips and tricks how to get more FPS without even using any mods. Now, the big thing about this is that you can just get more FPS with all these tips and tricks by using just vanilla Minecraft, or you can use a fabric loader or forge loader, it's up to you. But I'm just gonna be using vanilla Minecraft and I'm gonna show you how I can get a stabilized FPS. And I'm gonna show you right now that I am using mods and I'm getting stable 60 FPS while I'm on this little island. And basically, maybe, maybe we'll go like this. We're gonna type in forward slash seed and I'm going to press enter and we're gonna copy this seed to our actual clipboard. Cause maybe we'll use the same seed and if I can get this mouse, this this device does not want to let me use a mouse and keyboard by the way. I, I don't know what it is about it, but it doesn't work. But there's that seed and let's jump in and learn how I basically tinker with settings to get more FPS. Now, the device that we're using is called the Ambernic RG556. It's a low power device, low spec device, I mean. And in the end, when you wanna to try to play newer versions of Minecraft, there's gonna be more graphics, there's gonna be more things that are added, there might be different graphics. Sometimes the rendering might be better, sometimes it might not be, okay? I'm gonna call this one test, okay? And the big thing is that, actually, I'm going to start off with a small version, okay? Well, let's go down to 1.20.1. And we're going to call this test. And we're going to use the same actual world save and everything when we go through this. And this video might be a little bit longer. And I'm going to try to put timestamps, but I don't think there really needs to be. I think you should just listen and subscribe to the channel. And make sure you pay attention to the channel. Because I might be giving away some Java Minecraft accounts during this video. And, uh, yeah. They some. I said multiples, didn't uh anyways, <laughs> so we're gonna start off with 1.20.1. Now the reason why is because when you lower down your versions, when we're doing just uh just the basic, you know, vanilla Minecraft, sometimes that helps a lot. Okay, and picking the right renderer as well is also very helpful. Make sure you're using mobile glues for anything from 1.17 and above. Now, if you're you can play with GL4ES if you're not using any mods and see if that helps with your performance or anything like that. But I always recommend mobile glues just because a lot of people try to play with mods because they think it's going to help boost performance, which it does. And it does help with other things like getting other mods and shaders and all that kind of stuff. But the big tip that I'm going to tell you is this thing right here. This does actually help a lot with performance on most devices that I've tested on. I'm not gonna say some, I'm gonna say most devices that I've tested on, I've noticed that if I change my resolution scale, I can get a decent amount of performance. And you might say that this looks like crap and stuff like that, but 50% resolution scale on a small screen, which is a 5.5 inch screen on this device, but even on a small phone screen, might look okay to you, especially if you're messing around with shaders. Now, enable sustained performance mode. I always tell you to turn that on. Now, I'm turning off this Vulcan driver. That's not needed for this video. But anyways, um, that's not going to turn on anyways unless I use Vulcan. But that's going to basically help with boosting performance because it's changing how the graphics look on your screen. Now, we're going to go home and we're going to launch this game. We're also going to just use the default uh, FPS counter that shows up with... Uh, basically Xaelith Launcher. Xaelith Launcher can show you the FPS with our little gear icon right here. So let's press this, show real-time FPS, okay? Now we're gonna put that in the top middle of the screen. And yes, I'm using a controller that's built inside of this actual device so I can use my mouse and everything. Now the big tip is going into your video settings and basically changing things like your, your render distance, which I know a lot of people are gonna be like, yeah, I know that. But you can start off with no biome blend, okay? You can start off with a two chunk render distance. You can start off with fast graphics, or you can turn them to fancy. You can go right there. And that's why sodium is helpful because some features are unlocked without doing, you know, basically sodium or anything like that. Simulation distance, you can start off at like lower distances if you want. 
leave your max frame rate to unlimited just for now and keep your smooth lighting off, V-Sync off. Clouds, we can turn that to fast or off if you don't care about the clouds at all, like especially if you're underground, maybe turning off the clouds will be helpful. Entity shadows, that does help a lot, especially if you have a big farm of animals, okay? So if you turn that off and you have like 50 cows in a little area or something, you're gonna notice a big performance change. Entity distance, turn that all the way down to 50%. You can change your distortion effect to 50% and even your FOV effects. And it actually tells you what each thing does, okay? If you wanna read that and let you know what that does, then you can do so. Your glint strength, strength controls how transparent the visual glint is and, and enchanted items, which is something that you'll get into later on. And your particles decrease minimal all. I use decreased on the most part, and that is about it. Now that we've preset all that up, we can go into a single player world. And I'm just gonna jump into a creative world just for this so that you can actually see me flying around and stuff and check out what kind of performances we can actually get out of 1.20.1. And then we're going to use this same world save and try to mess around with these same settings with the vanilla Minecraft and move everything over to our new vanilla instance. So you can see that newer versions of Minecraft do add more performance requests that's all i'm going to say is more performance requests or is more demanding on your cpu and gpu and basically you'll see more or less fps usually <laughs> so here we go all right so we're loading into this world and again this is a lower spec phone or gaming device i guess if you want to call it that and we have a good biome here okay this is actually a good biome to actually jump into right away because this has a lot of graphics already and we're looking at right now stabilized at over 100 fps and we're using fancy graphics which is great and we're using 50 percent resolution scale and to me this looks okay okay so this doesn't look too bad and to you it might not look that great i don't know it's up to you what you think i think this looks okay even on my device but watch this i'm going to take my resolution scale and i'm going to crank this down a little bit more and we're going to see that it goes up look how much it went up just by standing right there almost 200 fps it's still looking okay we're at like 40 fps or 40 resolution scale and we're able to fly right we you know we're not at a far render distance or anything like that we're able to fly around and yes, stuff is loading in in the fog and stuff like that. And we do see big FPS dips, but this is one way that you can get a little bit more performance and feel a little bit more stabilized. Now, what do you do with this though after? If you wanted to just sit at these settings that I basically set you up with, what would you do with this 290 plus FPS or 200 FPS? Me personally, well, I would go to my options settings, go to my video settings, and I would change this max frame rate to a locked 60 FPS or a locked 90 or a locked 120. It depends on your phone's refresh rate too, like your screen refresh rate. But on the most part, if you have a really old low spec phone, like this one only has a 60 hertz screen in it, then 60 FPS is going to be probably your best stable locked performance mode okay and what does that mean for you as well well right now because we know that we were getting like 200 fps i could increase a couple things here i could increase my render distance i could go with six chunks i could go with my simulation at probably about 12 and then i can test this out again until i get that kind of stable fps counter okay and again, I can't tell with that though until I change my locked FPS, which is sitting at 60 right now, back to unlimited. So let's go back, go done, and then let's check to see what kind of FPS we're getting now with those render distances and that actual simulation distance and this resolution scale. What are we getting? We're getting around an average, we're getting still above 60 FPS, and I think six F or six render distance without any mods this is still without mods by the way right on 1.20.1 is pretty decent 
So again, you could check out my mod pack, OptiMobile, and check out to see what kind of FPS you can get with the mod pack and then without, if you set the settings exactly the same and use the same seed and everything like that. That's one big thing I noticed some people are like, oh, I feel like I'm getting more FPS and not getting more FPS with this. And it's like, how do you know that? I feel like sometimes people think that they're getting more FPS and they're really not because they're not actually doing a true side by side and they're loading into like a brand new Minecraft world or something and it's not actually <laughs> a true test. Where I do, I ended up just copying that seed from earlier. I know I didn't use that seed from earlier, but um, I copied a seed and then basically I would use that same seed and do a side by side comparison and basically load into the world fresh, waiting for it to load in and everything to see what kind of performances I'm getting at a stable performance. But as you can see here with the six render distance, I'm getting 100 FPS-ish with this resolution scale of what do we got again? 48, 40 resolution. We can change this a little bit more. Let's keep going. Let's go back up to about 60. Okay, and I think 60 is a sweet spot for this device. And that's the big thing too, is you wanna learn your device a bit and see where the sweet spot is. And basically we're still getting still above 60 FPS. And that's again, where I would say just lock that FPS or you can use another feature which helps with actually refreshing your device properly is V-Sync. Now we can turn this off. Let's see if V-Sync wants to work the way it's supposed to. Sometimes it doesn't work properly unless you restart the game, which it's not. As you can see here, V-Sync is not working properly. So um, basically restarting the game sometimes hits that V-Sync properly, but that's why I just lock it no matter what. And I keep playing like I'm playing on uh, survival. But yeah, you're still going to experience a little bit of frame dips and everything like that. And that is just common, okay? That's common, especially if you have a low spec device like I do right now. And basically we're gonna test out something else, okay? So what we're gonna test out, we're gonna jump on this tree and I'm gonna show you what kind of performance we're gonna get when we increase this to unlimited frames and we're gonna go and play with a newer version. So let's go save and quit. Quit game. And let's go back into Zealoth Launcher. And we're going to install the latest version as of today, which is 1.21.11. And we're gonna go test. And I'm using this lower spec device just because the Amber Nook RBG 6556 isn't using like performance modes right now or anything. As you can see here, it's just set to like an auto mode and it's not actually using all of its CPU and GPU like it can usually. It's also not kicking on the fan. Like the fan hasn't kicked on. I can feel the device getting a little bit warm, which is another big thing is that when you use a device that doesn't have a fan, you're gonna get thermal throttles and that's going to cause problems too. So what I'm gonna do is copy this world I'm gonna go back out and go back out. And I'm gonna go to 1.2111 if I can find it here. There it is. And I'm gonna go settings, world save folder, and I'm gonna paste that right there. Now, another thing I would like to do, uh, I'm gonna go back home. Hopefully it'll save these settings. Let's just double check this. Game path folder options i want to grab this options file copy and what i'm going to do is just copy this right into the options folder so that we can actually not have to go through these settings again game path folder paste it right there and let's go launch game There we go, so 1.2111. Let's double check our settings to see if it actually copied over. So yes, we have VSync turned on, uh, max frame rate, okay, everything, full screen current, six render distance, 12, yeah, everything is good to go. And we're going to go with quality and preset. Oh, custom, I guess it's just custom, I guess. Oh, crap, now I just messed that up. Six, <laughs> I didn't know that was gonna change anything. I haven't messed around with, uh, with, 1.2111 yet let's go down here let's double check to make sure everything else mipmap levels turn that off particles decreased yeah i lied i'm sorry guys entity distance why <laughs> cloud chunks i don't think we had that on okay there's a lot of new settings here that's interesting okay let's go back and let's see what kind of performances we're going to get with the same save and we are still using the same resolution and let's see what we can get because 12110 
well, even anything above like 1.215. Oh, the device wanted to die on me. That's because this device is an absolute potato. All right, now that my device died and I recharged it because this device is an absolute piece of crap, I think the battery is going on it. I charged it overnight and it wouldn't get past 80%. This is the Ambernick RG556 for anybody that wasn't here at the beginning and wasn't watching this all the way through. <laughs> so video settings, we're going to double check everything here. Just make sure that everything's saved before the device died. As you can see here, it looks like everything's saved. Uh, smooth lighting. I think we had that on. I'm not really sure. We're gonna turn that off though. Um, and also my buttons like to go backwards when you turn this thing off because I use Xbox mode, but anytime you restart this device, you gotta switch that back on because Ambernix UI is kind of not good sometimes. Anyways, so we have menu blur, entity distance, 50%. I don't think we had smooth lighting on, but the big thing is that we're gonna check to see how much FPS we get in that same world that we were getting um, basically a nice stable FPS the last time. And again, this is just basically just testing out just to see what we can do with later versions. You know, it's just newer versions have a lot more going on. And as you can see, there is a lot rendering in. And this is the same world that we just rendered into. And basically, we are hopefully stabilizing. We're going to stabilize here, device. Are you going to start giving me some FPS? <laughs> so, yeah, there, there's the FPS on the top. Like, almost cut into half. Like, I haven't touched anything. We're going to wait and to see if we can get this rendering in a little bit more. Um, Yeah, there's there's a lot of things. Like, we now have, what, falling leaves from the, st the trees and stuff. Now, is it even... Is they're there. Yeah, they're they're falling. There we go. Um, there's different graphics, and obviously they've changed things on the back end as well. And we're using only six render distance still, and we're only getting 30 FPS on this thing. And I'm not using the high performance mode that this device has, which sometimes does help with certain Android handhelds. It does give you well, it does help with performance in in a sense. Um, with most Android handhelds or any phones that have performance boosts. And yeah, it's trying to render in and do its thing, but like we're still not getting that 60 that we were getting earlier because there is more graphics but there's a lot of things like i said we can do and are we still sitting at 60 percent resolution we surely are and what about options i don't know what else video settings they have set up here let's go turn vsync off for a second here um reduce when we're afk uh full screen mode preset fastest biome blend chunk builder oh let's go with threaded let's see if threaded helps a little bit more because it usually does i don't know why that went to semi-blocking i don't know decrease mint map levels and improve transparency. Yeah, there's a couple more things that are a little bit different here. Like this whole menu is all different, obviously. Chunk facing 75 seconds. I don't know what that means either. New things I gotta learn, I guess. But we're gonna set it up to threaded. And is that stabilizing a little bit more? Still, yeah. But there's still more graphics coming in, right? We aren't using VSync anymore. Um, I told you like VSync is kind of helpful <clears throat> earlier, but yeah, that's that's basically it. 